Hey guys, I know it's been a while since I uploaded a video. However, I just wanted to let you guys know I've been working really hard behind the scenes to make something really cool and interesting and cool for the community. So for all of you who have been following me for a while, we will have a new home to converse on a daily basis. You can currently look it up at mw-industries.com. This will become the home of all my future games. Registration is currently offline until I finish the rules for the site, but once it's up, I'll go back to working on my games full time. Now that that's over with, let's get to the main reason why you clicked on this video. This is a Blender to Unity tutorial about making custom trees in Blender or any 3D modeling software, and how to load them into Unity and use Unity's terrain editor to paint beautiful trees across your terrain. This tutorial will be in two parts. The first part is modeling a low poly tree model in Blender, and the second part is loading the tree into Unity and setting up a prefab to load into the terrain editor. Now, the reason why I'm making this tutorial is because it's come to my attention that a lot of you have found my channel from the Unity forums. You see, two years ago, when I was first getting started with making game development my full-time job, I had a hard time figuring out how to upload the trees I made in Blender into Unity's terrain editor. It was quite the hurdle, but surprisingly, many people come across the same issue when first using the Unity game engine. Eventually, I figured out what the issue was and began to dive into making the game that we now know as Virtual Monsters. Well, apparently many people have been finding this topic because they come across the same issue. And because of that, I typically get DM'd on Facebook or Instagram asking about how to fix the same issue. Surprisingly, I get asked this question a lot. So after changing the focus of my channel around, I decided to make a tutorial to thoroughly explain exactly how to fix this issue in Unity. Now, I know there's already a bunch of tutorials about how to make trees in Blender, and more importantly, how to import trees into Unity. But out of all those tutorials, they are missing one very important key factor that allows you to paint trees on terrain in the editor. I know Unity has changed up things around in the past coming years, but this feature is still pretty much very basic to Unity, and I feel like anyone can do this. And more importantly, this is something that's very, very beneficial to a lot of people building games. So I figured I'd make this tutorial anyway and just see what you guys think. As always, before we begin, make sure to smash the like button, subscribe to the channel, comment, and more importantly, share this video if you find it useful. Now let's get into it. Okay, so we are going to get into this tutorial by opening up Blender. I recently downloaded the newest version of Blender, which is Blender 2.9. I personally don't like any of the versions of Blender after 2.79. However, for the sake of keeping this video very modern and fresh, I decided to use it since any future viewers of this video will most likely not be using an older version of Blender. So anyhow, once you've downloaded Blender, open a new general scene. You can do this by going to File, New, and then General. Once you have the new scene loaded, select everything in the scene by pressing the A button on your keyboard or shift selecting. Then delete all of your objects in the scene by pressing the delete button. The reason why we are doing this is because when we import our model to Unity, anything left within the scene will also get imported and we don't need additional cameras and lighting. Now before we begin, I just want to say that this is a low poly tree modeling tutorial, which means I won't be doing any texture painting or creating any dynamic leaf models with Krita painted textures. If you would like a tutorial on how I created the trees for my game Virtual Monsters, request it in the comments below. So the first thing we are going to do for this model is create a trunk. On your keyboard, press Shift A and a menu will appear on the screen. From that menu, scroll to Mesh and then select Cylinder. This will create a cylinder where our cursor is located. If you ever misplace your cursor, you can reset it by pressing Shift C. Next, in the bottom left corner, there should be a tab that says Add Cylinder. You can only get to this option if you don't do anything additional to your cylinder once it's loaded into the scene, such as grabbing the object or moving it around or editing it or selecting off the object or anything like that. Select it and then in the vertices field, set the cylinder to 12 vertices. You can use more or less depending on what type of art style you want to achieve. It's up to you. Though generally speaking, for the sake of this video, we're using 12 vertices. Once that's done, you can close the menu and then hit the tab button on your keyboard. This will take you to edit mode, which is where we will do majority of our 3D modeling. In the top left corner, select the face select button. Then press 3 on your numpad and then press G and Z. For those of you on keyboard, if you're having a hard time changing the view in your scene, that's probably because your preferences hasn't been set up right. In order to do this, go to edit and then select preferences. And then there should be another option that allows you to set up the number pad to change it to the top numbers on your keyboard instead. 
I know I explained that pretty horribly, but I kind of did it off the top of my head. Sorry about that. So anyhow, yeah, what this will do is grab your model on the Z axis. What we want to do is move slightly past the green line, which represents the Y axis in Blender. Once that's done, zoom out and take a look at your model. Your model should be roughly past the grid. What this does is that when you upload your model into Unity and place it onto the terrain, it will make sure to place your model directly on top of the terrain so that parts of it won't go missing. You'll see what I'm talking about once it's loaded in. Next, we are going to select the top face of the cylinder and then press G for grab and then press Z to grab the object on the Z axis. Slowly scale down the object. Once that's been done, make sure the top face of the cylinder is selected and press S to scale the top face of the cylinder in. And there we have it. We have the base of the trunk. Now we need to extend this trunk and add some branches. In order to do this, with the top face selected, press E to extrude the mesh outward. It should already be extruding on the Z axis, but in case it's not for some reason, press the Z button to do so. Good. Next, press S to scale the face in just a bit, and then press E to extrude the trunk out more. We will repeat this process of extruding the mesh and scaling it in two more times. Finally, we are going to work on the branches. With the top face selected, we will press E to extrude the mesh out more, and then we'll press G to grab, and then press Y to grab it on the Y axis. And then you can slightly move it left or right depending on what your preference is. Whichever you choose, it's really not that important, but once again, you're the artist here, so get used to using your own creative input with any type of tutorials that you come across, as it's not really important to copy the tutorial completely for what you see online, but it's actually better for you to learn how to improvise an uh, art tutorial versus copying it completely, because if you improvise, you'll learn to use any tools or techniques that was discussed in that video outside of just that tutorial. You'll be able to use the, any tools or techniques that were discussed in that video a lot easier. They'll become more natural to you, because you've learned to put your own twist on things. Next, we're going to extrude and grab the same way again, and then extrude and grab on the y-axis one more time to finish the branch. Once you've gotten to this part, select that top face and press delete. Then you're going to go into edge select mode by selecting in the top left corner the edge select button, and then hold shift alt to select the ring of edges of the face that we just deleted like so. Next, press S to scale in the missing face as much as possible, and with the edges selected, press F to fill them in. Great, now we got our tree and our first branch. Hopefully if you took your time on it, your model is a bit more pretty looking than mine right now. But this is good enough for our tutorial. We really don't need anything too complicated. We just need a 3D low poly tree to test out everything and for me to show you uh, what you guys are getting wrong in Unity. Next is a pretty cool part because outside of learning this technique, once you get used to it, you can freestyle and customize your trees to your liking. Okay, so now you should deselect everything by pressing Alt A. In earlier versions of Blender, we just needed to press the A button, but I guess things are different now. With everything deselected, we are still in edit mode. Press the Z key. There should be a menu that pops up, and in our case, we want to select W for wireframe mode. This is so that we can select the vertices and faces that we normally cannot see. This is because of the way the select tool works in Unity where it will only select what is visible inside of the viewport. Next, we are going to press B to perform a box select. And while holding down the left mouse button, we are going to select the branch we just created. Once the branch has been selected, press Shift D to duplicate and then enter to set the copy in place. Make sure you are still in edit mode while doing this. Then we are going to use R to rotate and then press Z to rotate the copy on the Z axis. Next, we can just grab and place the branch facing in a different direction of the other branch. You can also scale it down to add variation among the branches of your tree. Basically, you want the bottom of the branch to be covered by the rest of the model. You can view your model in object mode to see what it looks like, if it looks good or not to you. That's completely based on personal preference. Press tab to go back into edit mode, and then press shift D to duplicate the branch again. You're going to follow the exact same process as before, where we will use R to rotate the mesh into the proper position, and scale it down with S, and then grab it into the right place. Press tab to go into object mode to view your model. Okay, so that looks pretty good. Once you have a model that looks good enough for a trunk, we will move on to the next step. 
Now, once again, this is a low poly tree modeling tutorial, so we won't be making anything too stylized. While in object mode, press Shift A and select an icosphere. In the bottom left corner, there should be a menu. Reduce the icosphere subdivisions to two and then move it towards the top of the trunk model near one of the branches. This is actually very important to this tutorial is to make sure you create this icosphere in object mode and so that it's actually not a part of the trunk mesh model and that it's an object of its own within this object. It's parented to the parent object. Yeah, we're not going to get into object oriented programming. Yeah, in fact, every icosphere we create will represent leaves on the tree and they are important because they will tell us how our level of detail will work in Unity. Now, the trick to making some decent leaves out of icospheres is to make sure the icosphere has some variation. We can do this by scaling the icosphere to make it large enough for the branch and then scale it on the X axis to make it wider and then scale it on the Y axis to make it longer. Next, in the Properties panel to the right, there should be a wrench icon. Click it. This will open up our Modifiers panel. Inside of the Modifiers panel, select Decimate. This will place a Decimator modifier on our Icosphere. What this allows us to do is further subdivide our Icosphere by messing around with the ratio. Of course, when you create different leaves, you can use this to create variations among them. Remember, a key secret to making good game art is to make representations of things in nature and real life, but they don't entirely have to be perfect. It's those imperfections that allow people to explore games with more imaginations and gives the minds of players the ability to somewhat guess or imagine what it's supposed to be versus what it actually is. You can experiment what ratio works better for you, but this is one of those things where I encourage you to use your own artistic point of view. Next, we're going to place the leaves we just created and place it on one of the branches. Once you think you have a decent place for the leaves, you can repeat this process by using Shift D to duplicate the model and move it to another branch. If needed, you can scale the model down with S and adjust the ratio to give that specific group of leaves more variation. You will repeat this step for each branch you created on your model. Hopefully your tree has come out looking a lot better than mine, but now that we have this done, there's but a few things left to do in this tutorial. Of course, we need to save this model and remember to save often, as you have no idea how important that is in computer science. Next, in the top right corner, there should be a list of all the objects we created in this model. Rename each of the objects by double clicking its name. We will rename the cylinder to trunk, and then we will rename each of the leaves to leaf, respectively. In my case, I named the small leaves leaf S for small, the medium leaves leaf M, and the big leaves for leaf L for large. Once this was done, while still in object mode, select the trunk. In the right corner where we applied our modifier, scroll to the bottom beneath the wrench icon. There should be an icon for materials that looks like this. Click it, and it should open up a tab. With that tab open, select New, and then scroll to Base Color. Click Base Color, and there should be a color wheel option that pops up. You can select whatever color you want to make this tree. In my case, I just found a nice brown to use, but if you get lost, there's hex codes you can find on the internet to help assist you. I will list one of my favorite websites to help you out. Next, do the same thing to the other leaves. In my case, I picked a nice green for the leaves, then just copied the hex code and applied it to all the models. I'm sure there's an easy way to do that, but with all of the controls different in this version of Blender, it's hard for me to figure out just exactly where everything is. Once you've applied all the materials, save your model. If you want to know what your model looks like in Blender right now with the applied materials, press Z and then M for a material view. I don't know if it's the same as everyone else, but my viewport sort of has this glitchy thing going on. Yeah, I don't know what this is about, but I promise you, import your model to Unity and everything will be fine. Fortunately for us, importing our model into Unity is actually really easy as the Unity and Blender teams have made it really easy for us to do so. All you have to do is open the folder with your Unity project inside and then open the folder with your 3D model and simply move the model into the project folder. What will happen is that this file will get copied into the Unity project folder. Unity will update itself and if everything is fine, your model should pop up in the editor. Now, here's, I guess, the tricky part, or the part about making custom trees for games in Unity. Unity has a really nice terrain editor that you can use to create beautifully sculpted levels for games. A nice feature is that you can upload your own 3D models and use that to paint them on the terrain. 
In order to do this, we need to go to move our mouse over to the hierarchy and right click. There should be a menu that pops up. Next, we are going to search for 3D objects and then select terrain. There should be a new terrain game object that appears within our scene. Normally, I would texture paint it. However, I already made a tutorial about how to make beautiful 2D textures for video games. In order to save time, we will skip that. Now, in order to load trees into this terrain, we need to create prefabs of the trees in order to do so. What we will do is we will take the tree model that we just newly created and then move this onto our terrain. This will create an instance of the model we just created in the scene. This instance itself will be its own game object and we can modify this object to our liking. On the game object, we will select and scroll down to the bottom and select add component. From here, we will select rigid body and add it to our game object. On the rigid body, we will select is schematic and that is all we need for that. Next, we are going to add another component to our game object. And this is the really big secret. This is what a lot of people mess up with. And this is where a lot of people actually get stuck because in order to load your trees into the terrain editor, your game object needs this component. This is literally the reason why most people rage quit Unity. The next component we are going to add is the LOD group. Now, what this does is add a different level of definition for a game object, depending on how close or how far the camera is. Depending on how far the camera is, it will load different parts of the model that we set. We need this component and we need to set up this component before loading it into the terrain editor. How we do this is we select a LOD. In this case, we're going to select 100%. So this is basically what the game is going to render when the camera is within 100% full view of this game object. For this one, we are going to select the trunk and all of the leaves on the model. We are then going to drag them and add them to our level of detail like so. So at 100%, we should be able to see how this model looks completely. That's good. Now let's set up the other two. If you're having problems uploading the mesh into the LOD, try dragging the mesh directly onto the add button. So now at 60%, we are going to do the same thing, except instead of loading all of the leaves, we will leave one out. This is why I told you guys to make each of the leaves a separate object in Blender so that we will be able to coordinate with the LOD group better. We will repeat this with the 30% as well. Of course, you can also right click to add additional levels of detail, but for the sake of this tutorial, more isn't necessary. We can clearly see in the inspector what this LOD group does by moving our camera with the middle mouse. As you can see, when we move far away, parts of the tree begin to disappear, and when we get close, we get a full view of the model. Now that that's done, let's make a prefab of this game object. We can create a prefab of the game object by selecting your game object in our hierarchy and moving it into our assets folder. Once you have our prefab, select the terrain and look into the inspector. In the terrain component, there should be an icon with trees. Click on it. In that tab, there should be a button with a gear icon that says edit trees. Click on it and it will give the option to add trees to the terrain. Select the new prefab that we just created and add it to the terrain. And that should be all. With that, we can select the newly added tree and begin painting new trees onto the terrain. Of course, I was merely doing this for the sake of making a tutorial and just wanted to give everyone an idea of how it's done. I tried this out with the tree that I showed earlier for you guys, the one I used for an example that I didn't show actually making, just to give you guys a better idea of what type of worlds you can create with just different assets lying around. What I'm trying to say is I usually don't go all out artistically speaking for tutorials, so sorry for the lack of imagination. And there you have it. We created a completely customized tree in Blender, uploaded it into the Unity Terrain Editor, and painted some beautiful low poly trees all over our terrain. Hopefully, for those of you who have been getting stuck or simply haven't been able to figure out this problem on your own, maybe this tutorial will guide you in the right direction. I know it's pretty long, but trust me, it's better I explain things in detail than to remove pieces or omit pieces of information for the sake of making the video very, very short and simple. Very, very basic Blender skills in this video. So I hope you guys enjoy that. Well, I guess this will be it for today. I got tons of virtual monsters and MW Industries things to take care of. If you liked the video, make sure to leave a like, subscribe to the channel, comment, and share this video with your friends. Thanks for watching and keep making games. Till next time, this is Codemaster Jamal, and I'm signing out.